So I want to start off tonight discussing uh, an image that I came across recently that's that may be circulating circulating around on social media, and it was from a conference that took place in Baltimore, Maryland, this past week, and it was an image of who many people know as Irritated Genie, who, as you can see here, is in a struggle with I don't know who this guy is who was at the conference, maybe security or somebody who was hired, or maybe he is a member of the group that planned the conference. Uh, but the conference is called State of the Black World, number five. And at this conference, uh, issues are discussed concerning African people around the world. So essentially, this is considered to be a pan-African conference. Now, looking at this photo, we, we were all wondering what took place in this process for this struggle to happen. So I want to play a video. I want you to see the video and then I'm gonna get my commentary on what I found to be very disturbing about it. I know that this is gonna be your opportunity to make a comment, but we're gonna encourage you and try to turn it into a question. All right? This brother was first and then uh, NWP. I'll be brief. I wanna say my brother here and my family here I appreciate the work that we're doing. I think everybody should be in support of what you're doing. We like what you did. What y'all are doing for your son, my heart goes out to you. Uh, I don't even know what it feels like. I got a son at home, so I, I don't know what you're going through, but support you 100% and appreciate you coming out with this. As it relates to what happened in the beginning, so I want to say this. I found it to be the most disrespectful thing that I have ever seen as it relates to being called a libation. Out of all the years that I've lived, I've never heard something called a libation with the black men freedom fighters whose shoulders I stand on, who blood and spirit run in my veins, don't get mentioned. We love our women freedom fighters. We always bring them up when we're speaking. Whenever we do libation, we bring up Queen and Zinger. We love our women that fought next to us. But don't tell me. The question is not a question. I'm a black man. And we want you don't do a libation again unless you want to mention the black freedom fighters. And I'll say this. It says Black Lives Matter. It's unfair to call it that. Because as an African, I am on the front line fighting the LGBTQ imposition and pushing this homosexuality on my people in Africa and here. I will stand to the end as a black man and white man. I would love to respond to the question if there's a question. Is if there's not a question, let me just say Let's go. Let's go. You can't educate students like that. Black lives we matter here. Are, are, are gathering 
and attending to our brother who clearly now so as you can see uh the audience was disturbed by the comments that brother irritated genie made at this conference and irritated genie is a brother who has been in this struggle for the liberation of african people for a very long time uh to my knowledge at least over 30 years and one of the issues that he has been fighting since the beginning has been the homosexual agenda against african people now we go back to the initial statement that he made he started off his statement by showing empathy for the the panel in whatever they were discussing prior to him coming up there and then after he did that he talked about a libation that they did where they they did a section on african freedom fighters and none of the freedom fighters that they mentioned were men now I've been in this community for a very long time and I myself have never heard a libation done in any form that has not mentioned men at all. One of the things that our ancestors believed in is the balance between the man, the African man, and the African woman. So whenever libation is done, the African man and the African woman is always mentioned together. So for them to intentionally and i do believe it's intention it was intentional because there's no way that you can talk about the history of freedom fighting amongst black people amongst african people and choose to omit all of the men from the libation so that was intentional and i'm glad that he actually got up and addressed that because what we've been seeing over the years take place in our communities is that there's been an infusion of a lot of people who have different ideas, who believe different things, but who are all put under the same umbrella of what people want to call Pan-African, uh, what people want to call African nationalism or black nationalism. They're all put under this umbrella, but they all have different backgrounds and they all have different thought processes. And it has become very watered down just over the past 15 years. It's become very watered down where the African community is willing to openly accept or try to be everything to everybody with many people not wanting to stand firm and take a stance on anything. So I'm glad that he called out that that libation because you have to understand that a lot of people take African rituals very seriously. It's not something that is done just to make us feel good. And many people have a connection with these rituals. So to get up there and, and disrespect that ritual by choosing to intentionally omit the black African man is disgraceful and disrespectful. The second thing that I wanted to address was the reaction of the room. So initially when Irritated Genius started talking about how he's been fighting the LGBTQ imposition against black people on the African continent and around the world, which he has, anybody can go back and look at the bulk of his uh, work that he's produced over the past 30 years has dealt with this issue. There were a lot of disgruntled people in the room and there were a lot of people. There was even one sister I could hear yelling in the background that said, you can't teach students like that. This is a reality that we're in. If people can't learn reality, then what else can they learn? We can't continue to try to sweep stuff under the rug because it's, it's uncomfortable for us to deal with. And we have these topics that we know are prevalent to the African world, as we can just see a few weeks ago. What happened in Uganda? What happened in Ghana? And we know that the U United States government 
has an open agenda to spread homosexuality on the African continent. So this is a prevalent issue for black people. But it seems as though we've been reduced to a state in our community here where we've adapted or become immune to homosexuality and are now willing to openly accept it. Whereas our brothers and sisters on the continent are still fighting against it. So essentially the United States government is trying to reform black people in Africa into bending over the same way that black people in America have. Because I can play a video from Uganda where someone from the Ugandan parliament was speaking on homosexuality. And if you compare the reaction in this room to the reaction in that room, it's a drastic difference. In our country, we will have our morals. We will protect our children. And we are making this law. We are making this law for ourselves. We are making this law for our children. We are making this law for the children of our children. This country will stand firm. And once it passed, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, we are going to reinforce the law enforcement officers to make sure that homosexuals have no space in Uganda. So, you know, you have the guy come up and try to snatch the mic from Irritated Genie, which was also disrespectful because in our community, if somebody offers a critique, we have to know how to deal with the critique and accept the critique without trying to censor someone the same way that now pretty much the entire society has been reduced to, to censorship. And we see it online all of the time where people are kicked off of these platforms for saying things that people don't agree with. So when somebody steps up in real life, not behind a keyboard, not behind a computer, and they actually go to an event to give their opinion, now we're operating the same way that YouTube is. We're operating the same way that Facebook is. We're operating mm -hmm. the same way that uh, all these platforms that block people and censor people we're operating just like them in real life. Trying to block people from being able to say things that we don't agree with. If you didn't agree with his statement, then address it after he finishes giving his statement. But don't disrespect someone by trying to take the mic from them because you disagree with what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And then you saw the sisters that got up and walked out of the room, which, you know, they have the freedom to do that. But it just shows, as I stated, the drastic difference in response that you would see in this situation in America and in Africa. If our brothers and sisters on the continent, outside of maybe Julius Malema and the EFF, but if the rest of the brothers and sisters on the continent saw this video, this would be a disgrace. This would be an utter disgrace in our position that we are taking on this and you got black people in the black church you got black people in the black community who know that they have a disagreement but don't want to stand up and say i don't agree with it there are many elders sitting right there in the front you had the women in the back who chose to walk out and you have a room of people crying out loud that queer lives matter and black lives matter. And even when the host came back up to the, up to the podium, notice her statement when she said she made it intentional to say that black queer lives matter, black women lives matter, black children lives matter, and then she threw in there at the end, and yes, even black men lives matter too. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's 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 a very sad state of affairs to be taking place. Uh, I attended the uh, State of the Black World conference organized, uh, you know, by Dr. Ron Daniels' brother that uh, I know from the Black Liberation Movement. Uh, had an African-centered school in Youngstown, Ohio. 
one of the primary organizers of the uh, African Liberation Day in May of 1972. So, but I, I, I think it, I think the larger issue is, in, in my opinion, something that Dr. William Du Bois identified first in 1897 in an article which was titled Our Spiritual Strivings where he raised the issue of what he called our double consciousness. He said it is a peculiar sensation, this double consciousness, this sense of always looking at oneself through the eyes of others of measuring one's soul by the tape of a world that looks on in amused contempt and pity. One ever feels his tunis. That could be his or her tunis. He's writing in the vernacular of the times, obviously. One ever feels his or her tunis. An American, a Negro, we could say an African, a European, black or white or whatever you want to call it. Two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings, Two warring ideals in one dog body whose dogged determination, whose dogged, dogged strength alone keeps it from being torn asunder. So, so Du Bois is saying here uh, in 1897, and then uh, he published it again in his uh, book, The Souls of Black Folk, in 1903. He's saying this double consciousness was a problem in you know the the uh, early part of the 20th century that it was a problem this this african this european this this black this white or whatever you want to call it this double consciousness was a problem two unreconciled strivings two warring ideals so now if we look at what has happened, particularly the African uh, people in the United States, since Du Bois you know, raised this issue, what he identified as a double consciousness, and he identified it as a problem, two unreconciled strivings, two warring ideals, is now what? A sex tuple, you know, quintuple. I mean, what you have a, a class consciousness in our community. You have a feminist consciousness, and then you have the various gender consciousness. I mean, what what is this doing? It's it's you know he 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 said whose strength alone this one dark body whose strength alone keeps it from being torn asunder. What you see is. You see this body, this African body, being torn asunder by these various identities because identities produce a certain consciousness. And that's what I think a lot of people are not recognizing when they think you can be all of these things and still be one. You can't. Mm -hmm. So at some point, somebody has to take a position, you know, I say that, you know, our struggle is for the liberation and empowerment of African women, African men, and African children who have been disempowered over the past 500 plus years by barbaric and sophisticated systems of white supremacy based purely upon our Africanity based purely upon our Africanity. Not, you know, uh, sex, male, female, not class, not any of these other things. It was based purely upon that one thing. And so I don't, I don't see how we achieve liberation by, with all of these identities and, and consciousness within one dark body meaning within one uh, body politic or within one community or whatever, I don't see how you achieve it. And so people have to simply take a position and say, this is who the struggle is for. If you identify with something other than that, then you are in another struggle. You know, if we look back at our traditional culture, say if you go back to 
the uh, 42 Confessions of Innocence in the uh, Papyrus of uh, Nebseni, you see that our people saw, you know, this, this type of activity as a problem because how do you, how do you produce and move forward as, 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 as strong families when you going in all of these different directions? So that's, that's the point I think that, that people are missing. And, you know, I was on a uh, conference call with the organization and they wanted everybody to say, what is your pronoun? Mm. You know, he, her, they, you know, I, 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 I'm like, I'm sitting there saying. And this is a black, this is a black organization. Yeah. I, you know, I don't deal with, I don't deal with euros on that level. I wouldn't be, you know, I mean, you know, I wouldn't deal with, I wouldn't be dealing with them in a conversation like that. Yeah. A black organization. So when it got to me, I'm saying like, I don't know, I don't know what this is all about. I don't have time to, uh, obviously, you know, <laughs> you know, to get into a lecture on uh, Du Bois' double consciousness, but, you know, I, I don't have a pronoun. You can call me elder, you can call me brother, but <laughs> we wouldn't have anything to talk about in terms of the African origin of civilization or anything else without strong black families. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm known around in this this area of the world as you know the liberation man uh the libation man i'm sorry the guy I, i'm the guy they call on to do libations and man it's un it's 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 absolute it, it's blasphemy it's a travesty to 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 call out names and neglect one or the other mm -hmm. i mean i you know i've you know we always amos and nefertari queen taiyi and amenhotep the third you know martin R. and kate delaney booger t and margaret murray washington marcus garvey and amy ashwood garvey and amy jocks garvey and malcolm and betty shabazz and robert and mabel williams and rosa and raymond parks and martin luther and coretta scott king fanny lou and perry pap hamer I mean, you know, we we go through, we 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 recognize Ida Wells Barnett, you know, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, right? But we we recognize Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, Charles Deslandes, Bookman Duty, Bookman Duty, right there with the sister C C Cecile Fatimon, John Jacques Dessaline, mm -hmm. Jasper Yanger, I mean, Queen and Zinger, Yar Santawa. I see. You know, am man arenas. I mean, come on, man. What kind of libation is that? Mm -hmm. it's, it's someone with an agenda. That's right. It's clearly someone with an agenda.